policy analyst is based in Rugby UK. Tim, thanks for joining us uh, here today on A News. It's a tough day for us all. Um, we're, we've been following it since uh, the crack of dawn. I'm sure many people in the UK have been doing the same too. Boris Johnson has come out recently and said the utmost, the, the, you know, the, the harshest packets of sanctions are going to be in place. Is this enough, do you think? I mean, how are things being reported in the UK? Uh, well, we're, we're hearing a certain amount. Uh, I don't think Boris Johnson's response is sufficient. Um, we, we we know that uh, President Putin went on television uh, early in the morning in British time. Uh, Boris Johnson should have convened his COBRA um, committee by about 5 a.m. Instead, they waited until about 7 or 8 o'clock. Uh, this is sort of desultory and second-rate. It, 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 it's part of the second-rate response which we as a country have offered to this crisis from when it began. We sent off a foreign minister who didn't know her geography. We sent off a foreign minister who didn't know her history. She said that uh, President Putin was trying to push the Ukraine back to the mid-1990s. Complete rubbish. He was, he was trying to push the Ukraine back to 1991. Um, th this, this chaos in the West is exactly the reason why Mr. Putin has seen his opportunity. Um, he sees an American uh, presidency which seems uncertain. He sees Boris Johnson uh, dealing with his own crises and scandals at home. He sees a, a French president who's more interested in his re-election. He sees a German president who, um, who, 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 who is, who's barely got his feet under the table. And he thinks this is an opportunity. But he, what he hasn't realized is Ukraine is determined and is led by, I think, one of the most impressive world leaders that we've seen in a very, very long time. President Zelensky is spectacular um, in, um, in, in, in morale boosting, in crisscrossing the country, in doing whatever he possibly can to enlist support. And he hasn't enlisted as much support from the West as he should have done. Who is going to trust NATO, really, or Europe in the future? If all that they can deliver is words... Are you looking to deliver self-service analytics and BI? Um, but... Four basic ways in which this can now pan out. Number one, uh, Mr. Putin can pack up and go home. Number two... Uh, give, me, give, me, give, me a, give me a percentage of what the chances of that happening are. I think almost zero. Okay. Um, but, um, but, 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 you know, uh, if... Oh, this is really, this is really the point. Number two, China can uh, can stop taking Russian oil and stop um, uh, bankrolling this Russian operation. I think that's unlikely because China would want uh, something back in return, and that might well be Taiwan. That isn't that uh, th that's unthinkable. Um, so this leaves the possibility that um, uh, that Ukraine could give uh, Putin a bloody nose. And and I was so impressed by Maria Zokina's. Um, account and uh, and how people are seeing through the false news, uh, how people are seeing that the Ukrainians are putting up uh, a spirited defence and that things are not going uh, the way that Mr. Putin and Russia intends. Th that is spectacular, but the Ukraine needs more help. Now, um, the, 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 the fourth option is the option we really don't want to consider, and I would hope that President Putin would recognise he has daughters, he has a future, um, and, uh, and 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 we must we, we, we must hope that he thinks about that. I think he is, I think he is um, disastrously irrational at the moment and bordering on psychotic. Um, maybe that's all to do with the Botox injections. I have no idea. Um, but um, you know what we. What he said in his um, in his speech the other uh, last night was that um, was that this was an operation which was being conducted in response to NATO's aggression and 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 um, and, and to uh, really our, our our efforts to arm the Ukraine. Well, if that's the reason for his war, then I think we really should be arming the Ukraine. And I and, and I would um, I I would very much support uh, Maria's. Uh, call that um, that we should be offering the Ukraine serious weaponry, definitely a, a proper air defence system, and I'm and I'm astonished that 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 isn't already in place. As I say, so far the Ukraine, uh, the, um, the NATO, and the and Europe 
have offered words, 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 as Hamlet would say, and it's not enough. And uh, a lot of wringing of hands and a lot of very um, late and insubstantial support. Um, it, 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 it's, not, it's not enough. And you know, for uh, this man, Mr. Zelensky, is spectacular. Indeed. I mean, and, and our hearts and thought minds are with the Ukrainian people. But do, do we not think that these sanctions that the President Biden has come out and said, EU leaders have come out and said, that could absolutely cripple Russia's economy, I mean, completely closed the whole of Russia's business off uh, completely. Would that not deter Putin? I mean, perhaps no, right, right now, just talking about it, he's going to say, well, by the time you guys stop talking about it, I'll have finished what I need to do anyway. But because there well, hasn't been an, an action... Yes. Please, please. So it could be exactly that, that by the time you, you've got around talking, I would have finished my offensive. Um, what, what Maria says is that looks very uncertain and the Ukrainians may be able to hold him off for long enough that he can't take that um, view. But in the meantime, um, uh, the Foreign Minister Lavrov said that um, they expected sanctions anyway, whatever the outcome of the talks. Um, so they've already prepared for sanctions. I lived in Russia, I lived in Moscow for a while while I was teaching. And, uh, and there were already sanctions there. It was very difficult to get things in the supermarket. Um, and I'm sure this is going to get worse. But uh, Mr. Putin and the Kremlin have prepared for this. Uh, they, uh, you know, this is not a, this is not a war which is, in, which is intended to, um, to gain specifically, it's not intended to gain more territory for Russia or to specifically threaten NATO or the EU. This is to shore up Mr. Putin's popularity at home. And most Russians, with the exception of the um, elite who are looking at, um, uh, at sources like Medusa or something, most Russians are being force-fed propaganda day and night from Russia One and, and, and all these other channels right down to NTV. Um, and uh, the, the level of propaganda, this is what Russians see and they feel that, yes, indeed, this is a defensive war and the Ukraine is threatening the security of Russia. This is complete rubbish. But what else are they going to think? They have no other source of information. And they are going to steal themselves for the sanctions which are coming. I, I don't think sanctions are enough. Sanctions are not going to deter Mr. Putin. Mr. Putin has his back against the wall. Uh, the other day I said he was like a gerbil in a cage. He's like a rat um, pinned against the wall, and he is snarling and ready to attack whoever he can attack because he has nothing to lose. We've taken away his uh, palace that he, that he was planning to retreat to. Uh, we've taken away all options of a future unless he remains in power. This is about securing his next election. This is making sure there's no opposition. This is making sure he will sail into continued control of Russia because he has no option. And when you're looking at a man who has nothing to lose, this is incredibly dangerous. Okay, Tim, do you think, you, know, you say to me that uh, he's got his back against the wall, but it seems like he's very, he's very attacking. I mean, he started off in the east. We spoke to Maria there for a second. Uh, it seems that uh, that Putin is attacking from the north. He's attacking from mm -hmm. the east. He's attacking from any which way he can. Is he yes. going to push to try and take the whole country, regardless of? of I mean, he, he's on. Is he on a roll now? Well, I, I think I think not. He's he's got a limited number of forces to start with. Um, and uh, better, um, uh, better people than I have suggested that, um, uh, that he would need about 700,000 troops to take uh, the whole of the Ukraine. He doesn't have that. Uh, they're, they're not massed there. This is intimidation. Now, I think he may be forced to rethink his plans. He may have to, um, he may, may have to reinforce, uh, and he may have to add more, more soldiers. This is going to be an astonishing bloodbath if if he goes down that down, down, down that route it's um it, it's not good at the moment i think it might just be intimidation uh, he's certainly intent on getting the donbass region um but uh, if he's going for the whole of the ukraine he doesn't have enough forces ready and the alternative the alternative scenario is not attractive indeed indeed do you think are we i mean so far i mean maria was saying earlier that there are 
there are actually there is actually skirmishes going on where they're you know where they're fighting for land. I mean, we we haven't actually seen that in mainstream media as yet or just yet. But are we looking at more boots on the ground? Are we actually looking at you know modern not modern warfare where people will be in fact interacting and fighting each other like this, or is it always going to be from the sidelines, from the back? missiles you know across the border sort of thing i think i i, I, I know it's hard it's putin, hard to speculate but this is and yeah. it's worrying but the problem putin faces is that um is it, it, a guerrilla war and uh, and, and he's going into urban areas which, which, which are ideally suited for the, a guerrilla war and the ukraine will put up a defense um, and as I say, the Ukraine has a spectacular leader. If, it need, if ever we needed a war leader who had the charisma to lead his country into war, that is President Zelensky. And um, the only things available to Mr. Putin, if you, if you look at um, Russia's tradition of going into battle, it goes back um, all, 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 all the way back to Charles II. Um, and uh, uh, every single offensive maneuver by Russia has begun as a bit of a disaster. In the end, when Russia is attacked, the Russian soul creeps in and Russia will put up resistance because it has monumental numbers. Um, but it's only the force of numbers which um, which has ever been successful um, in Russian military history. So I, so, so I think if Putin is planning to do something new here, um, he's, he's planning without the Ukraine's opposition, and I think Ukraine is going to mount, mount a respectable and possibly successful defence, particularly if it gets proper help from the EU and from NATO. Let's hope so, let's hope so. Uh, to, I'm going to one more thing. You know when we talk about NATO, we talk about EU, we talk about UK, U, uh, US, all talking about sanctions, but I, I wonder if, if we actually start seeing blood on the on the battlefield, so to speak, can we can the rest of the world really just sit back and watch from our TVs without really helping? This is this is exactly the point. I think uh, I, I think the West has um, misunderstood this situation from the very beginning. Uh, I think um, I think it underestimated uh, Putin's. Uh, the, 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 the huge array of Putin's plans. Uh, so we, we spoke a, a while ago um, about Putin's plans to distract um, domestically and to, and, and, and to distract the domestic audience from the uh, trial of Mr. Navalny. That's been very successful, of course. Um, but, um, but, but Putin has a huge array of plans. And if one doesn't work, another one will work. And I think Putin is prepared for almost any eventuality. I don't think he has anything to lose. And once we start seeing serious warfare, I think we need to consider morally whether or not we have to get more engaged. I think it would be horrific. Um, it's not It's not something I look forward to. Um, but, uh, but we have to ask if we've approached this correctly. I think we've approached it appallingly. I think we've fielded exactly the wrong people to Russia to debate and to discuss with the Kremlin. And we've given, we, we've confirmed the Kremlin's opinion that we are going to be easily pushed around, and uh, and that we're not going to kick up a fuss. We didn't kick up a fuss when he went into the Crimea. We didn't kick up a fuss when he went initially into the Donbass, and he assumes we're going to be in the same position now. So, um, and, and I think th there's a vocal minority in Russia which will protest about this, but it's a, it's a minority of the Russian elite and the intellectuals, and that will command attention in the end. Um, but can Mr. Putin be thrown out of office? Is there anyone to replace him? I think not. That, that is the biggest problem. Mr. Putin has got rid of all opposition. And uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know what the future holds. Um, and, and equally, there isn't a strong leader in the West. Indeed. Professor We're Tim Wilson, sir, thank you for taking the time to uh, join us today on this sad day. We'll go down in history, no doubt. Uh, we'll talk again soon, I, I'm sure. Take care, stay safe. Let's see how things pan out. Let's hope that, uh, I don't know, maybe diplomacy can be brought back to the table. We'll see. This will be paid. Let's thank hope you. so. All right.